Jesus didn't die to free you from the law. He didn't die to free you from the Torah. He didn't die so now you can eat bacon. And sometimes I have to say these things so you can see how flawed the logic is. Because in my mind, the law is love and it's grace and it always has been. Why did he die? To free you from the law of sin and death, right? The curse of not keeping the law, which none of us can, right? The law wasn't designed to save you. The law was designed to set you apart. Keep the law. Anytime you keep the law, there are blessings that come with that. It's not always a monetary blessing. Blessing could be understanding, wisdom, knowledge. Well, that doesn't really necessarily mean it's going to be good for you and things are going to turn out well, right? Because God wants to grow you and mold you. And that's part of keeping his law is living to his standards, which are what is best for you. Like we like to say the Sabbath, man was not made for the Sabbath. Right? Wait, what does that mean? God didn't have a list of rules so you can make him happy by doing them. The Sabbath, which is an instruction, I shall keep my Sabbaths, which is not just the seventh day of the week, but the Sabbaths are also his festivals that you should keep because it's good for you. So man was not made for the Sabbath. Sabbath was made for man so we can enjoy them. They're date nights with God. The sacrifice was a community meal with God. The priest gets a portion. In the ancient world, when somebody wronged another person, they'd have what? Not a community meal, a fellowship meal with another person. Like, hey, I'm sorry, let's break bread. Same thing with God. And they're like, oh, I'm doing this magical sacrifice, so it's gonna make my sin go away. Not what it was for. Lots of different sacrifices, but it was this fellowship meal with the Father, having a barbecue with Yahweh. Everything, everyone, they like to point out, like I think that's just like the thing. They're like, tell me how the law is dumb. Now we're freed from the law. Why do you want to be free from something that blesses you? I don't understand. It does not compute. But they try to tell me how the law is dumb. Like, why is that guy killed gathering sticks on the Sabbath? I'm so glad. We don't have to keep that Sabbath thing anymore. Obviously, there's some more greater context here. I don't know why he was killed. God tells you to prepare for the Sabbath. It's a day to set apart doesn't mean you can't turn on your coffee maker or start your car or even, you know, keeping a fire going. The idea that he was gathering sticks could show that he was working, he wasn't prepared. And a lot of people think it points to, since he got the death penalty for this, the guy was killed, that he was actually going to do a sacrifice to another god. Just because we don't understand the law doesn't mean that they didn't understand the context. Same with Paul's letters. They probably understood a lot of the context that goes over our heads today. And we go at it with our Greek thinking and all these translator insertions because there's bias in the text. No doubt there's bias in the text. We have so many different... I read one version, I read another, it's completely different, right? There's insertion, because like, oh, I think it's saying this, so I'm going to add a few words, go back to the Greek or the Aramaic or the Hebrew, well, that word's not actually there. Now, when we take that out, we read completely different. So we have to be aware of that when we're reading our favorite versions, right? I used to be a King James only guy, that's how I was raised. And I'm not an old, uh, any type of version guy now. Like, uh, let's, uh, you know, because I don't read Hebrew, right? I don't I know a few words. <clears throat> and understanding those meanings have always brought 
a richer context. Every time I learn a word and the meaning behind it, it always brings me more understanding. Any more, even cultural backgrounds really help me get more understanding. But still, I'm like a, a ten-year-old, you know, probably less. Like, or somebody was raised, like the Levites would be, you know, raise their children, great understanding of the Torah. Cultural, culturally, I'm like, yeah, like a five-year-old, my understanding. But I'm far more aged than your standard Christian who has no understanding of the cultural backgrounds, but is just, you know, eisegeting everything, right? Just inserting into the text instead of doing proper exegete. And I promise you, the more you study the Torah, study God's perfect laws, they are going to start to make sense. Like I saw a meme the other day about an oyster, how it can filter, you know, something like 50 gallons of water a day. And then God tells you not to eat these things. Why? Because it's like eating your water filter at home. It's That's its job, right? There are things like pigs. There's like, this, there's a bad animal. Like you, should, you can't hang out with a pig. It's unclean. It's unclean to eat. It's not considered food. That's why when, when the, Paul or Jesus talks about food, nobody's thinking about oysters or pigs because these, in Jewish culture, it, weren't considered food in any way, shape, or form. Those are the filters of the world. They, they eat whatever garbage is around to help process it. It's part of God's beautiful ecosystem, right? And there's animals that were made to be eaten. And we even know this, the law does not change. The law was before the flood. There was Adam, or sorry, Cain and Abel bringing sacrifices. Cain didn't bring the right one. It's not like God's like, oh, no, you didn't do it right. Even though I didn't write it down for you, you don't know. But you did it wrong, right? And, you know, obviously there was instruction before there was a written law. They know how to give a sacrifice. There probably it probably was even for a specific feast day. I'm not sure which one it would be. I'm sure somebody has a good guess. But Noah, he knew what unclean and clean animals were. He had to put them on the ark. He had to be able to differentiate. Why was there sin? Why? How can God judge people on a standard before the flood? If, there, if there's no law, right? Of course there was a law. There was an understanding. He had it written down for us at Mount Sinai. But it always existed. So it never changes. It doesn't evolve, right? Because then it becomes what? Subjective. Subjective morality. So whatever the standard is today, right? Well, anything goes today then. You could twist the Bible. If that's your stance, you could twist it. Anything you want to be right today we have to have a standard it has to be unchangeable it has to be perfect it has to be eternal because the bible says it is stop trying to make god out to be the bad guy with his bad law and he put this opposing bad law on you so you couldn't keep it that's never the point it's to protect you rant over